If you ever had the experience of using an external monitor for your computer before, chances are that you have either used a VGA, HDMI, or even Thunderbolt cable to connect your computer to the display. But have you ever wondered how these cables have gotten so powerful? In this episode, let's untangle the history of display cables. Display cables were around way before personal computers were invented. The composite video cable introduced in 1959 was initially designed to connect traditional consumer digital equipment such as video cassette machines and game consoles to TVs at home. These cables worked by syncing both luminance, which were black and white signals, and chrominance, which are color signals transmitted by the equipment into a single signal that will be displayed by the television. This deliberate separation of signals was to ensure backwards compatibility where the equipment could transmit on both coloured and black and white televisions. It was not until the popularization of the PC in the 1980s where we will see the introduction of a brand new cable that would completely revolutionise display technology for years to come. When PCs were first introduced, each manufacturer designed their own graphics chips with varying resolutions and quality. This changed in 1987 when computer giant IBM developed the Video Graphics Array, or VGA standard for short, for their IBM PS2 computers. Its key strength was that it was fairly simple and it had an effective design, which allowed it to quickly become the industry standard for PC displays and would largely remain so for the next 20 years. In the 1990s, there was a growing demand for the development of digital video technology which was less susceptible to interference. This led to the introduction of the DVI or Digital Video Interface Cable in 1999. However, the bulky size of the connector made it less desirable than the VGA, while its lack of durability meant that DVI never really managed to replace its predecessor. The nail in the coffin for DVI came in 2003 when HDMI or the High Definition Multimedia Interface was introduced. The HDMI connector was much more compact than DVI, but more importantly could support both audio and video, which DVI could not. This allowed HDMI to quickly become the industry standard for digital video transmission and it remains so today. That being said, there have been many competitors to the HDMI, most notably the DisplayPort and Thunderbolt cable respectively. The DisplayPort which was introduced in 2006 actually has a superior display quality to the HDMI. However, it was 3 years late to the party, by which point most computers and laptops already included the HDMI port. As such, the display port did not manage to see the success that HDMI did. The Thunderbolt 3 cable on the other hand was developed by both Intel and Apple in 2017 and had the advantage of sharing a port with the USB-C port found on many newer computers and like DisplayPort posted a better transmission quality than HDMI. However, Thunderbolt cables are far more expensive than HDMI cables and with HDMI being around for the past 20 years, it's still a long way before consumers would choose Thunderbolt over HDMI completely. But there's still one last cable or lack thereof that we have to talk about. Wireless display technologies have been solely on the rise, with screen mirroring technologies such as Miracast for Windows computers and AirPlay for Apple devices respectively. These technologies eliminate the need for cables completely, but with its higher price and lower reliability, it remains to be seen if they will replace HDMI completely in the future. Anyway, I hope I've managed to untangle the history of display cables for you today, and for more videos like this, do check out our series link in the description box below.